So there are certain myths about food and, and medicine and lifestyle which uh, are uh, very commonplace. Now, some myths originated historically, some there's some vested interest, though they continue to propagate that myth. I have picked five for discussion purposes today. One is everything in moderation. So some people come, so-called wise people, and they say, eat everything in moderation, and you will have no problem. This is wrong, because when you eat everything in moderation, you also get disease in moderation. The diseases which we have come to accept as old age disease. And you will hear people all the time saying, who are in their 60s, that, well, I mean, what more do you expect? So, so a little bit of, I just take a tiny pill for blood pressure and, and, and then I have a little joint pain and little uh, asthma issue. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. There are still zones in the world, they're called blue zones, where people live to be 100, 110, 115 regularly. 100-year people are working in the field. And when they die, they don't die of any particular disease. They just die because the time has come for them to leave. They die at 105 or 110. Uh, Okinawa Island is one of them in Japan. There's a place in California, Loma Linda. And, and these people live in places where there are no hospitals. Maybe a few doctors, one or two among 20, 30,000 people. And they live a healthy life. So to think that by consuming everything in moderation, you are safeguarding yourself is totally flawed thinking. The second myth is about protein myth. Everybody tells you, oh, you got to take your protein. That is most important. When I was six years old, my Nanaji insisted that I must take a raw egg, only the yellow portion of the egg, a yolk uh, with a glass of milk. And, and I totally disliked it, but I took it. Because he, he was brainwashed that children need a lot of protein. Now, this myth surprisingly was busted by two Indian doctors. Because we, you know, in India, the milk is a big thing. Of course, we pray to cow, and that's fine. But we believe that milk and curd and cheese and paneer, uh, they, are, they are a very important part of our nutrition. It is totally wrong. So there were two doctors, Dr. Madhavan and Dr. Gopalan from Hyderabad. They did a research. They took a sample of uh, two, two sets of mice. To one they fed only 5% protein. The protein used was the protein in milk called casein. So they used 5% uh, casein in their diet and in another set of mice they gave them 20% casein. So essentially meaning that total protein in your diet as a percentage of calories was 20%. And then they were injected with some carcinogenic uh, injection so that they would catch uh, cancer or develop cancer. And it was found that the group which was taking only 5% protein did not develop any tumor. The group of mice which was taking 20% casein or protein developed tumor liver cancer. So this research was published in 1967. A, a renowned uh, doctor and nutritionist, Dr. Colin Campbell of Cornell University, his PhD thesis was that animal protein is critical 
to human growth. And at the time when this article was published, he was working in Philippines to help Philippine government uh, improve their nutrition quality by finding ways to provide animal protein to children. When he saw that article, he was totally shocked. He said something wrong has happened. I think the publishers have, have uh, misplaced the data, have exchanged the data. The conclusion should be totally other way around. And because that was his PhD thesis. His PhD thesis was that animal protein is essential for human survival, human health. So he wrote to the, the, the publisher, he said, I think you have made a mistake. And the publisher checked the data. He said, no, we have checked with the doctor. This is what the research is. So Dr. Colin Campbell went back to his uh, lab at Cornell and he replicated the study. When he replicated the study, he found it to be true. Now, total, that was totally in, in contradiction with what he had believed all his life at that time. And, and then he did another research where he, to the same set of mice, he's fed 20% protein for three weeks and then 5% protein for three weeks. So the period while he fed 20% protein, the tumor grew. And when he fed 5% protein, the tumor shrank. When 20% protein again, it so became like a jagged edge knife. Okay. And, and since then, he has been the leading proponent of uh, plant-based food. Okay. Uh, that documentary that I talked about, Folks Over Knives, uh, interviews Dr. Colin Campbell and many, many more documentaries have been made. He is the most highly regarded uh, nutrition expert in the world today. There's, um, and there are others. There are about 10, 15 uh, doctors uh, who have moved in that direction and who for last 10 years, I came across it only eight and a half years ago, but they've been speaking out for, for over 10 years. So the fact is that mother's milk, which is fed to a newborn child, should have the perfect amount of protein because the, the nature made mother's milk for that child. And the protein in mother's milk is only five to 6%. So five to 6% is the ideal protein amount in diet. And no matter what you eat in your diet, if you're getting enough calories that, so that your weight is maintained, you cannot be protein deficient. There's not a single recorded case in the civilized world of protein deficiency. Okay, 97% of the people get too much protein. And the same 97% of the people get too little fiber. So the problem is not that you need protein and we have to change that thinking. That's the one thinking we, if you can learn from this lecture today, uh, that will benefit a lot. Now, the second question that comes when you tell people that dairy is not good for you, is how will you get your calcium? That's another myth that dairy is very important for calcium. Countries which consume maximum dairy have the weakest bones. The research has shown that America, Canada, Denmark, Sweden, these are the countries where milk consumption is maximum and they have the highest uh, hip uh, fracture rate. The osteoporosis the disease is maximum and most prevalent in these countries. Because when you drink milk, it causes acidosis. And to neutralize that acid, the calcium is, is bleached, is sucked out of your bones. And then your bones become weak. So the milk has totally a different impact on you. It does not strengthen your bones. It, it weakens your bones. Uh, and the milk has many other problems. 
most of the autoimmune diseases are caused, or many of them are caused because of milk. Because of the protein in milk, if it leaks through your, your GI tract, your gastrointestinal tract, it's called the, the leaky gut syndrome. If it leaks out and gets into your blood, the blood develops, uh, we call it autoimmune disease. It develops an autoimmune disease where it wants to attack that, that protein to kill it. It thinks of it as a threat to it. Okay. Now, certain parts of our body proteins, and we have more than 2 million different proteins in our body looks similar in structure to the milk protein. So as a result, it is starts killing them also. Type 1 diabetes is primarily caused by feeding cow's milk to children. Okay. We'll, we'll move on to next myth. Each of these subjects normally is a separate talk in itself. Exercise myth. This is a big myth. A lot of people, they go to gym, they work out for an hour or two, and they feel nothing can go wrong with me. I mean, I work out every day. The workout in gym, in fact, is not necessary. The people 10,000 years ago did not work out in gym. They walked. The only exercise, the only important exercise is walking. Human body was designed for activity. You need to be walking every day, Every hour, you need to be active. If you're working in the kitchen, that's activity. If you're working in your garden, that's activity. So people, if just because you exercise and go to gym, and these are the people who get their heart attack, many of them die because they, they, they eat unhealthy, but they think that just going to gym, nothing wrong will happen to me, and their cholesterol level goes up, their... Uh, blood pressure goes up, the, the deposits happening in their blood vessels all the time, and all of a sudden, boom, they get heart attack. Half the people who, who die after their first heart attack have normal blood chemistry. So, so doctors cannot tell that there is any signs of uh, heart illness in them. The last one I have added here, is, is, is a myth I experienced a lot in my members because even when their health has improved, their blood pressure has come down, the cholesterol has come down, they're reluctant to give up that medication. There's a feeling that it is better to be safe than sorry and taking that medication pill is keeping you safe. So if you have two choices, a slightly higher blood sugar or no, a low blood sugar and a medicine, they prefer the second one, which is wrong. The doctors now have come to conclusion and it is happening more and more in last 10, 10 years that the medicine is a cause of bigger problems than that slightly escalated symptom in your body. So you should get rid of that medicine. For example, a lot of people believe that a good blood pressure would be 120 over 80. Okay, but the, the, the new findings have clearly stated, and they came in 2014, that for people under age of 60, they should not take any medication if their blood pressure is 140 over 90. If it is under 140 over 90 or at 140 over 90, you don't need medication. If you're over 60 and your blood pressure is under 150 over 90, you don't need medication. Now, so many people will just keep taking it. Even though when I show them the research, the, 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 the documentation, the videos, they clearly spell it out. They say, oh, no, I just want to play safe. The problem is you're not playing safe. You're hurting yourself. Your goal should be just get off those medications because one medication leads to other problems. When you see, medi when you see the, the, the prescription or, or the, the, the printout that comes with that medicine, it may talk about two or three side effects. 
But you know, there are another 17, 18 that it did not mention because the manufacturer of that medicine was able to get away from it. Okay. There's these two or three they had to mention because they could not get away from it. So there are different side effects on different people. We all are different people. Okay. Our gut has a lot of microbes, bacteria, fungi, viruses. There are 40 trillion cells in our gut. Our body has only 30 trillion cells. So we have more foreign cells than our own body cells. And that gut is different on every person because the gut, composition of the gut is a function of your life, your diet and lifestyle. And it is different. So different people respond differently to medication, so the side effects are different.